pi there. Evaluate the product from n equals 2 to infinity of 1 minus 1 over n squared without using a calculator. So before we solve this one, you may pause the video for a while to try this first on your own. Okay, so let us start. To solve this, first take note that it's kind of hard to visualize what will happen out here since we have infinity out here. This means that this product goes on and on. So what we can do instead is to consider partial products. That is, for all natural numbers k, we consider p sub k, we denote this as our partial product, so it will be equal to the product from n equals 2 to k of 1 minus 1 over n squared. So basically, this partial product is simply just this, but we replaced infinity with k. So we made, or we made this infinite product out here to be finite. So that's the idea on partial product. If we expand this one, this is equal to 1 minus 1 over 2 squared for n equals 2, 1 minus 1 over 3 squared for n equals 3, for this one, this is n equals 4, and so on until n equals k. So we'll have this. Now, what we can do next is take note that the ones out here are squares, since we know that 1 is a squared value, since 1 squared is equal to 1. Moreover, observe that the for this second term out here, take note that in the denominator, they all have squares. So since this one is square, this one is square, and actually this whole, these are squares. So, we can apply difference of two squares in each of these expressions. That is, we'll obtain, so if you don't know again, difference of two squares, if we have a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a minus b times a plus b, simple as that. So applying this idea out here, we'll have p sub k to be equal to 1 minus 1 half times 1 plus 1 half, 1 minus 1 third times 1 plus 1 third, 1 minus 1 fourth times 1 plus 1 fourth, and so on until 1 minus 1 over k times 1 plus 1 over k. And so we obtain this. Next thing that I would do is I would group certain terms together, or to be more specific, I would group the factors with same operations or with similar operations in it. That is, I'll group these, the one with the subtraction, and these, the one with the addition. So by grouping that, we'll obtain first this group, the factors with subtraction in it, and then this group the factors with addition on it. So we obtain this one so far. Now from here, let's simplify the terms that we have, or the factors that we have. So we'll have, first, 1 minus 1 half simplifies to, so this is just basic subtraction of fractions. So we'll have 1 half out here. 1 minus 1 third is equal to 2 thirds, 1 minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths, and so on until 1 minus 1 over k to be k minus 1 over k. For the next group, we do the same, so I will leave that to you to verify that this is equal to 3 halves times 4 thirds times 5 over 4, and so on times k plus 1 over k to obtain this. And so, given this one, 
let us now cancel certain terms. Focusing on this group first, we can cancel out the 2s, the 3s, the 4s, and so on until the k-1s. So the idea here is that the denominator of the first term cancels with the numerator of the next term. So if we repeat that one, we can cancel until the k-1 out here. For this next one, we can cancel out the 3s, the 4s, the 5s, and so on until the k's. For this one, the idea is that we cancel out the numerator of the first term with the denominator of the next term. So we repeat that one until we reach k. And so upon those cancellations, we'll be left with 1 over k times k plus 1 over 2. So as you can see from a very complex um, expression, we just obtain this simple and nice looking expression. We can even make this look nicer. We can factor out the 1 half, so we'll be left with 1 half times k plus 1 over k. And then take note that the k plus 1 over k out here is a mixed fraction. So we can convert this to an improper fraction to obtain 1 half times 1 plus 1 over k. So we have this. So this will be our expression for our partial product, this one. So we now have a simplified version of our partial product. But again, what we want to obtain is the value uh, of the infinite product, not just the partial product. So what we can do is focusing on this k out here to make this partial product, this, val this expression out here, be same with this, what we can do is we can make k approach infinity. So if k approach infinity, we'll have as k goes to infinity, first take note that 1 over k goes to, we know that if we replace k here with infinity, then we'll have 1 over infinity. And we know that in limits, a constant over infinity is equal to 0. So 1 over k approaches 0 as k approaches infinity. Given this, we can now find the value of this one out here as k approaches infinity. And so, 1 half times 1 plus 1 over k as k approaches infinity is equal to, so we'll have here, 1 half times 1 plus 0, so technically 1 over k approaches 0, so we'll have 0 out here. And when simplified, this is just equal to 1 half. And this is actually the final answer. Since we have shown that if this one, if k approaches infinity, so we'll have this one. And so this one is already the same as this one. And we know that p sub k is equal to this value. But this value as k goes to infinity is equal to 1 half. And so given those idea, we had found the value of this one to simply just be 1 half. And so that is how we obtain the answer for this type of problem. So I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot from that one. If you have any comments, suggestions, and recommendations, and even questions for clarifications, you may comment it down below and I'll try my best to answer those questions and make the solution out here clearer than what we already have. Also, if you have alternative solutions, please don't hesitate to comment it as well down below. So yeah, I hope you had fun answering this one and that's it. That's all for this how to solve video.